Pass up the Jeep, it's good to be free. Load up the pans and fishing poles. The highway is long, the wheels turning round. Pack up the cook stove and the bowls. Arlo and I, we hit the open road. Arlo and I are on the road. Hey everybody, Arlo and I are out and about again today, and today we're on a mission. Uh, my wife at home has tons of uh, congestion, chest congestion and head congestion, and uh, well she does all the time. Um, it's not this time in particular, um, but during allergy season it's even worse. Um, but I do know of several uh, plants that I can uh, come out here and gather that will be super helpful um, for her to uh, to make some healthful teas um, that'll help clear out some of that mucus and stuff. So um, probably the main um, uh, plant that we're looking for today is this one right here. It's called mullen. Here. Now, this um, is a plant uh, that's been used for thousands of years. Uh, for this very reason. It helps uh, with uh, sore throats, um, congestion, chest congestion, coughing, uh, things like that. Um, and uh, people have been using it all over the world uh, for those reasons. Um, and it's really common everywhere. Um, it's kind of a interesting, and I've talked about it um, in previous videos, um, but it's an interesting plant. Um, because in the first year of growth, it grows close to the ground, um, sort of in a rosette pattern and then in the second year it sends up this giant sort of uh, flower stalk um, right up from the center and they can grow really tall they can grow up to oh man like five six feet tall There's, I've seen some that have been taller than I have and I've actually I think shown some in previous videos um, but we're going to collect um, some of this uh, um, mullen plant here um, because this is going to be a super um, healthful uh, tea uh, for my wife's uh, congestion um, and uh, um, it actually really tastes good too. Um, so right around here, there's a whole bunch of uh, this mullen here. And I'm just gonna take a few of these mullen plants just like this. Um, and then we'll dry these and uh, we'll use these uh, for uh, a nice tea. Now you can use it fresh just like this and make a tea and you can also uh, use it uh, dried. So um, we'll probably use some of it fresh right away and then uh, we'll dry a bunch of it um, for the winter months as well um, because my wife tends to have uh, a lot of congestion um, all the time or she has not even necessarily congestion but uh, a dry cough um, all the time and this will be really helpful and go a long way towards uh, helping relieve some of those symptoms. Now one way that you can dry these is just to pull the leaves off and dry the leaves separately um, or you can tie a string sort of onto this um, base of the plant here and just uh, dry them like this and we do uh, both um, we have them hanging around the house like this from a piece of string um, just like this and those will dry, dry nicely and then once they're dry you can kind of crumble them up and uh, put them in a mason jar um, and then you have it uh, ready for uh, you know the winter months all right, now here you can see these are a couple examples of the mullen that is in its second year of growth because it's um, shot up uh, this uh, uh, flower stalk here, and um, you can see you can see these uh, really pretty little yellow uh, flowers that are growing on here. Now this whole thing doesn't just completely fill with flowers; they kind of uh, bloom kind of sporadically, so you kind of have to come back um, from different days and uh, collect them. Um, as they kind of come out here So here are some of those uh, pretty little mullen flowers there and uh, now these uh, traditionally are used um, as a, uh, a Soothing oil for an earache so you would take you would take these and dry them out a little bit and then put them in an oil um, olive oil or a similar oil um, and uh, let that uh, mullen blossom 
kind of infuse into the oil and then for a while, several weeks, and then strain it out. And then uh, you can use that oil uh, to uh, drop into your ear if you have an earache. Um, and that helps to uh, relieve the pain um, with an earache. Um, you don't want to use it if you have an open wound or burst eardrum, um, but if you don't, I mean, if you have uh, like an ear infection or um, uh, an earache, um, that's a very soothing uh, oil to use for that. So I'm going to collect um, a bunch of these uh, little uh, uh, mullen blossoms here and take a few as we go along. And uh, when we get back, um, I'll make some uh, mullen oil with that. Here's another uh, large uh, mullen stalk here. Um, I'm gonna collect some more blossoms uh, from this one. Now another thing uh, that people have done is uh, when these um, grow larger and they start to dry out, um, they use them for a candle or a torch. Um, and then all that you need to do with that is uh, wait for them to mature and then they'll dry out. And when they're dried out, um, you can uh, drizzle them with an oil or uh, some people dip them in wax um, and then they can use this as a candle or a torch. Kind of a cool idea. Uh, but for now, while it's still green, um, I'm going to collect uh, as many of these little flowers as I can. Now this right here is an awesome find and uh, I wish you could smell this just from this whole little hill here. It's completely covered um, with what I know as bee balm, but it's also called wild bergamot. And Arlo is up here walking in the wild bergamot. But look at this really beautiful flower here. But it's all over this little hill here, this rocky hill. Um, look at all of this. Now, Arlo and I are just in this beautiful field, well, hillside here of this uh, bee balm. And ah, the aroma is so strong. And you can tell why they would call it a bee balm um, and why bees would love this. Because just walking up to this area, uh, I could just really smell it. The whole area just smells like this. And it is part of the mint family, which really explains uh, this, this uh, really fragrant, uh, minty, almost oregano-y kind of aroma to it. Mm. And there are bees and butterflies buzzing all around here. Um, and I can, like I said, uh, really understand why this would be popular uh, with the insects, um, just because it's so fragrant. Hmm. Yeah. And there's so much here. Now this is also an incredibly nice and soothing uh, tea. Um, this will be another one to take back for my wife um, for her to uh, help with her uh, congestion. Now the bee balm or uh, wild bergamot can be made into a hot tea. can also be made with a cold infusion. So we can put this in cold water and let that, uh, the cold water just kind of leach out all of those uh, natural Mm, flavors um, and aromas um, that'll help with uh, that chest congestion, um, that uh, uh, sinus congestion, um, because of that just real minty um, aroma. Mm. Um, but because also of its uh, soothing qualities, it's great uh, for uh, helping to uh, drink before you go to bed um, and uh, helps you go to sleep. Um, just as does lots of uh, other uh, teas um, like in the mint family. So once again I'm going to take a few of these uh, back with me and we'll use that in our herbal arsenal um, for uh, breaking up that uh, that congestion in the chest and in the nose um, and in the head. Um, so uh, I'm gonna start collecting some of these. Yeah.
And once again, uh, just like anything else, um, I try to pick in specific areas very sparingly and uh, leave uh, the majority of the plants uh, for the bees. Um, but we're going to collect, um, you know, quite a few here actually because not only is this hillside um, covered with uh, this uh, bee balm, but I can see in the distance here uh, several of the other hillsides or these rocky little um, outcroppings are all covered uh, with this uh, wild bergamot um, uh, bee balm. So um, I feel pretty comfortable in collecting a good amount of it, but like I said, we're going to leave the majority of it here. are pretty young. You want to smell that? It smells good, huh? All right, we're going to uh, head back out and we're going to see what other nice soothing herbs that we can find along the way here. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Arlo's having a, a great time out uh, chasing little grasshoppers and things. I think maybe he was chasing uh, a little ground squirrel or something a little while ago. <laughs> yeah. Tuck it out, we'll go back to the Jeep and get you some water. Uh, but um, this as a, a nice little shady, rocky area. Um, we're taking advantage and um, having a little seat here for a second. But I also want to talk a little bit more about these uh, mullen plants. Um, another way um, that people use uh, the mullen is also to uh, smoke it. And uh, I believe that some people actually do smoke the plant they dry it and they smoke it um, but a gentler way to use this especially for uh, your lungs and your uh, um, clearing out your uh, bronchioles and things like that um, is to uh, make this into sort of a uh, smudge uh, stick or uh, you could uh, actually dry the leaves and just crush them up and uh, a lot of people put them in like a shell or something and then they can burn that and then they can uh, um, kind of uh, breathe in some of that uh, healing smoke um, to uh, help with uh, a dry cough and uh, and some of that congestion. Um, uh, but one of the fun projects uh, my wife and I like to do is to uh, make these into like a, a smudge. Um, so uh, we would uh, kind of gather these together like this. I'll take some of these smaller ones. If you have a larger one, uh, that will uh, work just by itself. Um, and then take a string and you tie it around this. And I try to add maybe several of these um, along here to make kind of an equal thickness um, across and then tie the string around um, and then trim off the edges or you can fold uh, these ends in um, and you make a really um, cool looking um, but useful uh, smudge stick. Um, but I feel fortunate um, already um, we're just getting started and we found um, some great mullein and we found um, some of this uh, really beautiful wild bergamot or bee balm. Um, and these are both uh, great herbs, um, plants um, for, uh, like I said, um, for uh, clearing out your chest or helping with that dry cough. Um, so I'm going to take what we found so far um, and then we're going to um, head out and see what else we can find um, that we can use for healthful tea. Arlo and I are hiking out through this, this area here um, that's uh, primarily covered um, with this Jurassic-like uh, bracken or bracken ferns um, everywhere. Um, and yeah, I almost feel like uh, when I'm walking through this um, that there's going to be a dinosaur <laughs> coming through. Um, but it is really cool looking. Look at that. Very Jurassic Park like expecting some velociraptor or something come uh, charging through. <laughs> but uh, it's only Arlo charging through. Um, on our quest uh, to find more soothing herbs um, for um, my wife's uh, tea and uh, dry cough and chest congestion, um, I've come across um, several other plants uh, in here um, that I think are going to be great and beneficial um, for her as well. Um, the first one uh, right down here is uh, this plant uh, right here. Now 
Now that plant with its really beautiful um, white flowers um, that sometimes can be a sort of a bright pink color too, um, but these happen to be white. Um, this is called yarrow, um, Achillea millifolium. And uh, this is one of the most ancient and uh, well-known um, herbal uh, plants there is all over the world. Um, but uh, the uh, Achillea part of its uh, Latin name stands for Achilles, um, the great warrior in uh, Greek mythology. Um, and he was said to have uh, used um, this plant, um, the arrow, um, to uh, heal his soldier's wounds. Um, because this plant is astringent, so it does help uh, stop the blood uh, from flowing. All you need to do is uh, crush up these leaves and uh, put that on the wound, and it does help to uh, stem the bleeding. You can also use uh, the flowers. Um, and I find um, that the uh, yarrow flowers are some of the most uh, beautiful flowers um, out here in the woods. Um, now, the millifolium part of its Latin name uh, stands for, um, you know, thousands of leaves. Um, so the uh, yarrow leaf um, is made up um, like a feather. Um, it's a very feathery um, leaf there. It's made up of all these tiny little leaves. Um, so Achillea millifolium, uh, meaning the herb of Achilles, and millifolium, I uh, mean multi, um, many, many leaves here, thousands of leaves. Mmm, and that smell. They are. You know the smell is? Yeah. The yarrow, yeah. Mm. Now, uh, I don't think uh, uh, yarrow is good for dogs, um, but for humans, um, this is a very um, useful uh, plant. Mm. So I'm going to collect uh, some of these uh, leaves and some of these yarrow blossoms. Um, what do I do with that other one? Here it is. <laughs> um, these yarrow blossoms, and we're going to um, use that for our uh, tea as well. Just right over here is another really useful plant right here in the same area. Um, where did I see that? Oh, here it is right here. Now this plant right here is called heal all. And this is another plant uh, in the mint family um, that is also great for um, a nice soothing tea. Hmm. And it's a very interesting flower. It sort of has this a barrel barrel-shaped um, head to it with these little um, purple flowers coming out, um, exploding out from all sides of it. Um, it has sort of a cylindrical sort of barrel-shaped. Um, sometimes it has a, a darker reddish color to it, kind of like a root beer barrel. Um, and then it has these bright uh, purple flowers um, sticking out. Mm. And just as the name Heal All suggests, this plant has been used for thousands of years as well um, for many different things. Um, but being in the mint family, um, this is great um, for us as a soothing um, a sleep aid, um, also as a great soothing um, for colds and congestion. So um, just in this one little area here, we've collected a couple more um, soothing uh, herbs, uh, the heal all and the yarrow, which we're going to use um, to add to our other herbs to make a soothing and healthful tea to help my wife uh, for her chest congestion and her dry cough. Well, so Arlo and I found a nice little spot in the shade here, and I'm going to make up uh, some of this nice tea um, to try it out before I bring it home to my wife. Um, so I brought all of our herbs and stuff um, that we collected along the way, and then I have my cool little Japanese teapot here, um, which I like to take out in the woods, and uh, we're going to make a little bit of tea. All right, so we have 
all of our nice little herbs that we collected here. So I'm going to add uh, some of our uh, bee balm into the pot. Actually, I have a couple of those, the bee balm. Um, I have some of our, what is this? This is our heal all. Put that in. Our mullein. Um, some of our yarrow. Here. I'm actually going to put a little bit of the yarrow blossoms in there too. And then last but not least, I found some uh, little uh, white clover here in the field where I'm sitting. So I'm going to add that in there for a little sweetness. Um, and uh, that should be perfect. Oh, here's another uh, of the uh, heel all. And I'll fill this up. All right, we have all of our herbs in there. I'm going to get our fire going. Let's see. There we go. All right. <laughs> Just be a couple minutes, and we'll have some delicious um, herbal tea. I love this little aluminum Japanese teapot. I think it's from the 50s, um, but it's uh, perfect for one person out in the woods. It's funny, right here where I'm sitting, you can see all of this yarrow just growing all right here. <laughs> you don't have to uh, travel far or look very hard uh, to find some of these herbs. Oh, there it goes, it's starting to steam up, so I'm going to, actually I'm going to turn off the heat that didn't take long, and I'm going to let that uh, those herbs steep in the water for three or four minutes uh, before I pour my cup of tea. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to sit here and watch Arlo wander around through this field here. <laughs> He's looking at me right now. What are you doing, R? Anyway, um, while we're waiting for our tea to steep here, I just want to mention, hey, I'm just a chef. I'm not a uh, herbalist. Um, I'm not certified um, in any of these things. So, um, you know, as far as the uh, uh, nutritional or uh, um, medical benefits of uh, these uh, plants and stuff like that, I'm not an expert. So uh, um, I'm just going by uh, what I've read and what I've uh, known in the past. I've learned from my grandparents and things like that. But uh, don't take anything that I say as any sort of uh, medical advice. Um, like I said, I'm a chef. When I see wild plants, I think, oh, how am I going to cook them? That's going to taste delicious. What are the flavors of it? Um, I'm really not thinking so much um, uh, health benefits, other than I know that uh, um, and then harvesting, foraging for your own food is definitely um, something that I highly recommend. Um, but uh, like I said, don't take anything I say as sort of medical advice. Um, do your own research uh, before you try any of these things, especially like this tea and things like that. Um, there are do, some people do have allergies to uh, specific plants and things like that, so do your research uh, before you uh, try any of these things. Um, but uh, I do know from uh, trial and error and from um, some experience that uh, my wife and I have uh, been recently uh, been doing quite a bit of the mullen tea, and uh, uh, mullen really seems to help with uh, my wife's. Uh, dry cough and a little bit of the congestion that she has um, so all right well I think our tea has been steeping long enough and I'm gonna pour it into my favorite little fish cup here Wow, look at that beautiful yellow color. That looks delicious. Looks very, like almost lemony. The smell is incredible. You can really smell those sort of minty, sagey kind of uh, um, essential oily kind of uh, aromas. Um, it smells really good. 
I think that bee balm is really coming through strongly. I really kind of smell that sort of minty oregano-y kind of uh, aroma. At least that's what I get from it um, when I, when I uh, smell that uh, bee balm or uh, wild bergamot. Um, I really sort of get the oregano um, sort of a aroma to it, but you know, maybe that's just me. Let's try it out. Mm, hot. Oh, but delicious. Mm. Wow, that is really good. I know, I always say that, right? Good thing I like my own cooking. Uh, that is really, really um, herbally, herbal flavor. And I know that yarrow is a very strong flavor, and a little bit of the yarrow goes a long way. And I think a little bit of the bee balm um, goes a long way as well. The uh, the um, heal all, um, the uh, what else did I put in there? Um, the mullen all have very mild, sort of vegetally kind of uh, a green kind of a flavor um, that doesn't really uh, take over. But the uh, the bee balm and the uh, yarrow are very powerful in flavor. I think I can almost feel like my sinus is kind of clearing out a little bit um, because, like I said, it kind of really has that sort of essential oil kind of uh, of aroma and the, the steam from the tea coming out. Um, but it's actually really delicious. I don't have any honey with me, um, but if I had some honey, that would be really good in here. It kind of has a a familiar, even though all of these herbs are not ones that I normally uh, use in my kitchen, it has a very kind of a familiar flavor to it, almost as if I made tea with, um, say, like some Italian seasoning or uh, herb de Provence, something like that. Um, kind of has a, a similar kind of a quality to it. Not exactly the same, um, but kind of a similar kind of a, a quality to it. What a day, man. Hmm. This tea is surprisingly delicious, and I'm really excited to uh, head home and to uh, surprise my wife with a bouquet of uh, these healing tea herbs. I think she's going to be psyched um, to try this out. I wish you could see what I'm looking at right now. Well, actually, you can see what I'm looking at right now. This is my view right here. You can see the Jeep parked over there. But the beautiful fluffy clouds in this little meadow here. Uh, doesn't get much better than that. Well, if you like this video, um, please like um, and please subscribe. Um, I always say it always helps us a lot, and it really does help us a lot. Um, it doesn't cost anything, and if you just hit that like button on any of the videos that you enjoy, um, it really helps us so much um, because when uh, YouTube uh, sees that uh, people like the video, it shares it out to much more people, and that's how, uh, partially how the algorithm works, and uh, that's how we get seen by uh, many more viewers, and that helps our channel grow. So. Um, if you do like what we're doing, um, please uh, hit that like button. Um, really, really appreciate it. And, uh, well, I'm going to find Arlo and uh, finish my tea, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye. Gas up the cheek. It's fun to be free. Load up the pans and fishing poles. Arlo and I we hit the open road, our love and I on the road.